Welcome back to my next video in the Sea Power in the State um, series I'm doing. Uh, originally this game was published in 1982, Simulations Canada, Steven Newberg, soon to be republished by Compass Games. Uh, information is in my previous videos about this. And uh, the disclaimer is I am leveraging the preview graphics that were on the Compass Games website and put it into a previous Vassal mod I made using the older graphics. Uh, there's pictures of that in a previous video too. Um, but again, I mean, I'm not involved with the playtesting or anything going on with the re uh, republishing of this game, so, you know, I'm sure the disclaimers of all of these are subject to change, etc. And I'm using the rules from version 1. I have no access to the new Compass game rules. But the graphics are just so nice that I couldn't resist using it. So, what we're doing here is we're just going to look at this, the Mediterranean here. Um, just to start putting the rules uh, through their paces a little more as we kind of start expanding our playthroughs of this. So if we look at the sequence of play, the first step is compact level determination. I covered that in my previous rules review, but <laughs> I'm just going to assume one of the sides uh, right out of the box, you know, kind of a bolt from the blue thing, go to level 2 conventional warfare. So balloon goes up, conventional warfare in the med. And that's pretty much the conflict phase. Western shipping assignment, that's an optional rule. And also there is no there are no shipping lanes in the med. So it doesn't really apply. Which then takes us to the first player phase, and that's the Eastern player or the Soviet player. So following the sequence of play we have uh, sub and surface movement, and then we follow that with assigning aircraft. So I spent some time looking at this to come up with a strategy. Um, so this submarine, for example, uh, he's not going to last long if he sticks around here, so I'm probably going to pull him out, okay? But number two, I'm going to go after this uh, boomer here, U.S. ballistic missile submarine. Uh, I don't know what it's doing in the med, but uh, that's, I guess, what we did. This was probably using the older Polaris missile with a range of five, so it's on patrol here in the med to be in range of perhaps targets down here. Um, but we're going to go after it. And uh, just my thinking here was uh, this helicopter carrier, who knows, the Moskva class, that's got some great ASW value there at 25. So the helicopter carrier can move from here to here. Um, I'm going to keep the cruiser here, and then we'll talk about these in a second. But my other big target uh, will be this carrier. And that's scary. 50A tells me it's probably a Nimitz class, and I'm going to just throw everything at it, including air power, we'll see in a second. But what I want is that standoff A range, um, because if I come in here with ships that only have a range of B, C, or D, the carrier air group is going to go to town on them with the A range, so at least I get a shot at them. So if I'm looking at what's got A range, both these have A range. Uh, and the fast boat, and that's what's going to localize per the rules the first turn, trailing the American carrier. So, but I want anything with an A range. So I'm going to pull this cruiser over here, and then of course this Kirov class over here. So all my ships have A range. That's good. So they all get a shot in um, at the same time that the carrier air group does, which is good news. Um, and then this sub. Uh, sub rules for movement are you can move through two. Surface ships have to stop when entering a hex with enemy surfacer subs or base. Submarines have to stop on the second one. So he's not going to survive here. So I'm going to pull him out and just help in the search for the boomer here. So there's my med fleet has moved. Okay. Um, this, just from a logistics point of view, I didn't even mention that. I should have. Okay, the two nuclear ships, I'm not worried about logistics. But the CV can provide logistics. Um, it's conventionally powered, though. So if we look at the logistics rules, hopefully I have that here. Yeah. Uh, we have a CV that has a, 20, a defensive of 19. So if it's less than 3, it can supply 3 units and itself. And so that would just apply to the cruisers. So they're fine.
from a logistical point of view. Uh, if for whatever reason the CG started not on a port, um, it wouldn't. It would have to return to port this turn or get supply from the CV. And if the CV wasn't there, it would basically be eliminated. But uh, that's all we have to worry about. The fast attack is nuclear powered. And the um, Kirov is nuclear powered. Also, logistics from the point of view of this uh, SA, or SS, it's a diesel boat it looks like. Um, it has now moved back to uh, an E3 base, so it can potentially resupply itself here too. Uh, we do have a CH also, let's see. So we'd have to look at this uh, later logistics. A class 3 base can supply 3 units. This is a class 3, so we're okay for the end of the turn if they survive. Um, they will be supplied by this base, and these units will be successfully supplied also. Now these units, uh, I don't have to worry about logistics now, they're starting an E1 base as class 1, unlimited. So they're good to go, so they can spend one turn trying to get out of the Black Sea, but then the following turn... Um, Pretty much all of them are going to have to go back to base. Uh, some of them can probably go to the E3 down here. Um, so three of them can stay out. Uh, that's interesting. So here's what I'm going to do here. Uh, I'm not going to mess with these units, because mainly because they're sitting on a Class 1 base. And that's not a good place to be. We'll look at the values for that later. But these, this is a Class 2 base, which has limited lower values. So I am... The Soviets here are going to try and get out of the Black Sea and basically pile on here. So, and then there's this decoying concept. You want to see that too. So if I look at my ships here, I do actually have a cruiser with an A value. S and then everybody else, C, D, D, and uh, C, C, surface B, uh, probably don't want them to be involved in this battle down here with the carrier air group. But I would like to get maybe this A cruiser out there. So what we can do is this rule called decoying. Um, and if you have an equal number of friendly subsurfaces, enemy subsurface base, then other friendly units can go through. That's a class 2 base. It's equivalent to 2 units, so that's 4 units. If I get 4 units here, I've decoyed it. Um, and in this case, well, that like cruiser isn't worth very much. I may leave that one there, but I definitely want the helicopter carrier. That is great against um, submarines. Uh, and I will pull out the DG. No, I'll pull out the DG for sure. Let's pull out that. Okay. Then we come up here and... Oh, that's nice. Well, my 12A has got a nice value, but I'll pull out the two DGs. Let's see if I can get them there and there. And I'll definitely want the 3. Well, it's not great, but it's a diesel boat. Pull out the diesel boat here. Now, I have more now. 4, 5, 6. What did I say it was for a class 2? Uh, decoying for a class 2. It's 2 units. Equals 2 units. So, I need to have 4, and I do. I have 5. So this cruiser with a speed of 6 will go 1, decoy 2, and join this group. And add its A value in. Okay. So the question is what I want to do with these two units. Um, they're not very useful here. Uh, they don't have an ASW value, and they have an ASW value of 1. Maybe the frigate. But I'll leave. Well, the frigate and the cruiser can come down, but again, they don't have a good ASW value, so I'm almost tempted just to leave them there. But hey, let's put some more cannon fodder in this. I'll leave the cruiser there. It's got a good defensive value, though, too. Okay. So those have moved, so I've basically uh, moved all my ships. So if we look at the sequence of play. Then we assign aircraft. Now, here's an interesting thing I saw here. And if we go to the main map, you'll see it too. Uh, aircraft cannot fly through enemy bases 
and enemy target hexes. That's what these are. Um, so if I look here, I could fly as many aircraft as I want out of here, but and if we go to the main map, you'll see too it extends. There is a solid line, and here's a target hex of allied bases here. That's why I didn't attack here. I can't get any aircraft here. Um, so it doesn't make any sense to leave the sub there. But I can get aircraft. Let's talk about this attack here first. Um, I can get aircraft from these E3 bases, and this guy could fly like this if he wanted. And but you're limited with aircraft on how many aircraft can uh, can fly from a base. And here we go. Class 1 base, unlimited. But again, this is all blocked by these enemy targets and bases. I can't even fly around. I tried to fly around the Suez, and if you look at the base layout, it doesn't work. Um, so, class 2 base 6, class 3 base 3. So, if I use both these bases, I can get 6 bombers here. Uh, that's what I'm talking about here. And I've got a lot of B3 bombers. I got 25, I think. I mean, it's on the chart. You can see it in the previous. I got, yeah, B1s, I've got 25. So that's just a designation. It's not what they actually are. Uh, the B2, I've got 10. And the B3, I've got 20. So if we look at those, and let me pull that up here a second. I think I had them here. Yeah, I do. So let's look at this. Um, the B1... Oh, I'm hiding pieces. Hold on. Let me not do that. There we go. So I'll just put them up here. Here are my choices. I got a B1. I got a B2. And I got the B3s. And I don't have as many B2s as I have B3s. And they've got longer range, too. Um, I've got 20 B3s. Uh, I don't want to send the B1. These things will be shot down. They won't get a shot in. Um, and the other thing we want to look at, let me hide this here, is, yeah, and look at that EC, uh, e, EW value. Oh my gosh, that's a target. B3s. So basically what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to do six B3s. It's two, three, four, five, six. And, uh... Yeah, they're going to get there by flying out of these. They Apparently they pre-staged here in Libya and Egypt or whatever. And they're going to join in on the fray here. Okay. Now the question is, do I want to use, you know, any other bombers? i got six here. Now here's a western base of two. And I can show you what the bases look like here. So that's pretty hefty anti-air there pretty hefty and a nice EW value still I mean it, this is why you don't want to mess with the class one if you don't have to okay but a class two is still serious excuse me so the question would be um do I really want to commit anti-submarine ships um anti-submarine aircraft uh, and what these have is we have an M1 and an M2, but that 7 is pretty awesome here. But, again, this this base 2, oh, 12C, I'm going to get attacked from that. This is may not be pleasant. I've got to get all the way to D range to go after these. And that fast boat has something. So, I don't know, 30 is pretty large, and their EW values are... I gotta do something. Two and three, and they're four D, and they're seven. Seven. That's more important. Um, and how many M twos do I have total? Gotta admit something else is going on somewhere else, so can't use them all. I have fifteen. So, um, and their defensive values. That's three and three. Uh. You know, that's that's an interesting decision. Okay, when I look at this, uh, that's not very wise, since uh, they've got to fly all the way probably to D range. And each step of the way, they're going to be hit by that air power coming out of here, 30. Um, they will not last, so I'm not committing any um, air power here. Okay. Uh, because of that base, they'll, they'll just be attrited out of the way. So... The only, and then I can't get anything here, um, because I actually used all of these for here. 
you know, maybe I could subtract one and put one here to help with this. I mean, that's that's a possibility, but uh, that's an interesting idea, actually. Let's try that. Let's just do this and this. Uh, and the good thing is nobody's going to shoot at this coming in. It's uh, Eastern Bay, so it will add its ASW value when the time comes. And I've got 5 times 4 is 20. Um, you know, that's an interesting decision here. Uh, I can only do six aircraft from these two bases, so... Um, you know, do I need that seven there? I've got six and twenty-five. What's this defensive factor? Six, and it's got a defensive factor of eight. I'll leave it there, just to play it through. Maybe a mistake, but we'll just leave it there just for the heck of it, since it can't be shot at. So if we go to the sequence of play, um, we do see now we come to combat. We're not doing weather. Uh, mine combat, no mines are laid. Uh, later on there's a mine laying phase down here, but we'll assume nobody's laid, laid any mines. Uh, and then we're at surface ship localization. Um, so I guess we could play through each one, okay? Um, and in this case, yeah, and these are all submarines here, so... Actually, the only place this applies is right here. So we've got the big battle here. And the question is, can I localize? And uh, the carrier is automatically localized. Um, but can I localize the other ships in the screen? So that's the first thing we have to determine here, uh, localization. So let's scroll there. And looking at this, uh, it seems extremely unlikely here. Totally... EW value of all friendly units plus an RSAT, and I bet you they would have had an RSAT, but we won't include that here. Um, and if we do total this, uh, I've already done the math, combining the bombers too, we get 42. And then we roll 1d6, I'll roll that offline here, I get a 4, that's 46. And then we subtract from that the highest EW value of one number unit, so that takes us down to 46 minus 4 is 42. And then we subtract another 1d6, that's 40. Um, and then highest, yeah, so we got 40, subtract, divide by 2, dropping, so it's 20. And basically, yes. I mean, that would be enough to uh, form 4 is 8, 8 and 3 is 11, 13. They've definitely detected. Everybody's localized here, so they've got them. So... What we next do is uh, we move on to the actual combat here. Now, and here's the other thing. There is no... Oh, wait, there's a Western 3 base here. Western 3. Let's take a look at what a 3 base adds to the things here. Okay, that's help. That's anti-air there. Okay, so we will combine that here. And that will help. So let's pull up our battle map got it right here and uh, I'm not going to put a battle here there is a battle here marker we can use that just so we can see the game yes battle hex okay so let's just pull all these units um, onto this map here sorry it's disappeared on me so, yeah, we got a problem. If we got one up, you can't have the other. So I'm going to pull it off somewhere else here. Just dealing with some vassal issues here. I think I could pull it here and it won't disappear. Yep. So we got all the bombers. And we got this. And then the Americans go here. And I actually do have counters for these, so I can probably use it. Uh, let's put the battle hex right here. And let's um, let's actually put a base here. It's a be western base 3, so this is also it's not going to be attacked, but that gives us an idea of what's going on. So there we go. Hopefully this won't disappear anymore. And I'm going to go ahead and make this go away just to make life a little easier for us here. So this is our battle. So let's follow the rules here. 
A A A S combat. Okay. Range A. A A resolution. Non phasing player and bases. CVs must attack. Um, so we're going to do this one first. And of course, the kicker is holy smoke, they got 50 and 10 is 60. Uh, 60 factor here. Okay. And if we're doing a, a resolution here, um, procedure. Total and roll 1d6. I don't think they're going to live. Um, holy smoke. Okay, well, let's just see if this falls apart. I don't even think adding an extra one is going to be here. Roll 1d6, and I get a 3. So 3 plus 53, 63. 63. Um, so they get 63. And then we attack attacker total AA value of bases and units, 63. Defender total EW of units, subtract. So we've got an EW of 20, which leaves us 43. Um, and they've only got a defensive value of 5, 10, 50, uh, 25. Holy smoke. You would have to do a bunch of bombs. Even if we did the sixth bomber, it wouldn't get through. This this carrier is a bear. Look at that 50A. So these units don't make it. The combination of the Class Three base, maybe F-15s, Inserlik, who knows, the U.S. Air Force, and the carrier air group. You're going to have to send a lot of bombers to take that one out. 63 minus... Well, that's a lesson here. Minus 20, 43. Um, I would have had to send nine bombers, maybe ten, which you can't do. Okay, good to know. Didn't work. So they're gone. So now we move to simultaneous A range combat. All right. And the way we do that is mandatory between unit bases, both players that occupy the same hex. Now, the base does not play a part. It's a 4D, so that's good. Um, but A range, the only A range unit they have is the carrier, the carrier air group. So they're going to attack with 50. Okay. So the phasing player attacks first. It's got 50. So, and then I believe it's the same thing here. And we add 1D6. And let's see what we get here. So we got 50, and I rolled a 2. So we got 52. And then we total here. And actually, let's use the, uh, let's use something new here. Um, yeah, here we go. Total applicable attacker, 52. Subtract EW of all applicable defenders. This is on the map, actually, 52, and they've got, uh, uh, let's see, this is surface combat, so the submarine doesn't count, so they got 7, and 8 is 15, <laughs> 15, 15, uh, let's see, wow, 52 minus 15 is 42, minus 4 is, uh, 38. If I'm doing this right, 38. Subtract totally, that'll be 38. Let's see what kind of defensive values we have here. This may not be good. Uh, 38. Okay, we got some solid ones there. That's 23. Uh, so there's going to be specific units eliminated at attacker's player's choice. Well, they're going to take out the CV and the BG. Let's see what that gets us. Nope, that's too much. They can't take out both of them. That's a relief. So the question is, they want to take out the BG or the CV. They're going to take out the CV. They got 38, so you're only going to get one shot here. Let's see if we can take that out. Well, let's just put these aside. Let's just do this. So I got 38, 52 minus 7. And 8 is 15. I did it right. 
38. So let's take out this guy, 38, so that's down to, oh, 19. And then we look at these, 13 and 9. It can't take out both of these. Um, so let's see, we got 19 left. Uh, and if we take this, that'll be 6. So let's take out this. So here we go. The carrier air group came in and took out the carrier, the Mintz class, and took out the guided missile cruiser. But these guys get to shoot back, and they're all A's, so that's good. So they got 23, 35, ooh, that's, uh, let's see, 23, 35, that's 45, 52. This one's in it, 62, 64, 64, 74, if I'm doing this right, 74. And then we roll 1d6, where at these numbers it doesn't matter. They got a 5. That's 79. 79 minus, ooh, they could take out the carrier. There it is. 79 minus uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Takes us down to 69. Takes us down to 66. And they do take out the carrier. 66. So... That's 45, and 40, 66 to 46 is 21 left. Um, actually, 21, 11 and 9 is uh, 20. So there we go. Okay. So if I did this right, there's big losses, but they were able to take out the carrier. That was the big thing. So they did sink the carrier here, right? That's crazy. Okay, so these units were destroyed. Uh, Barry basically buried them in surface-to-surface -surface missiles is all I can say. And that, I don't know how much this thing, this one contributed with aircraft, but it's gone too. So a lot of bombers here. That was an exercise in futility, but now we're still left with these. And there's a base still here. Um, and we can't attack the base, but uh, we'll run into trouble when, you know, we, we've got to get within. Well, these guys can keep attacking as they move in. Let's look at this here. I have a feeling this is going to be a one-sided combat at this point now. So, we're all done. These guys can break off if they want, but they're not. They're going to move in. Wow. Okay. And now we're at B range. There's no aircraft anymore. A and B units and bases must attack. Well, this is a D, this is a C. Uh, I'm going to basically say this guy's dead meat. Um, you got 17 and 12 is 29. 39 uh, is down to 37 plus 1D6. 37 and it doesn't matter. He is sunk. Now, I'm not doing the optional base attack. We're not going to waste our time attacking this, but at the end of the battle, yes, the uh, Soviets were able, if I played this right, anybody who's watching this and watching the rules, but I think it, I did. It was that first salvo at A range. Um, now, that the carrier air group took out a lot, but the combination of all these surface-to-surface -surface missiles uh, probably overwhelmed the defenses and took them down. This would be an interesting one to play out in Command Modern Operations. Um, so, wow, and I'm already at 28 minutes. So, this is what's left. Huh. A Kirov, a cruiser, and a, who knows, maybe that's a Victor III. And the rest of these units are um, dead. And I think I do that, have that, yeah. Destroyed, destroyed, destroyed destroyed, and they, they did take the mints, but from the Soviets point of view, uh, that is a good swap. This was a waste. I shouldn't have sent the bombers in. Should have just piled on ASW on the boomer. So let's go to that battle. And that'll be interesting. That'll be the last thing we do here. That second battle, so let me find the European map again. Put this back. And going to return these to the battle hex. And now we're going to move here. 
And we're on an actual eastern base, so I don't know how that... Uh, it's a three. I don't know really how much that plays, but let's see if we can figure out how to do this. Well, for, wait, I messed up. First we've got to do sub-localization. So let's come back and look at this. Let's look at the uh, sequence of play here. Now, ironically, this, this was great. They sank the carrier, the Nimitz, but no victory points for this. There's no shipping route, no nothing. Now they've taken away the capabilities of the U.S., but um, no victory points uh, based on what we covered in the rules review. But hey, they sunk the Nimitz, okay, for the loss of the Minsk. So if we come back to here, to this localization, we'll try subs here in a second. Let's look at our, I want to go back to the sequence of play here. So we did this, we did this, and now we're on sub-localization. So let's see if we can localize that boomer. Um, so, coming down here to localization, um, total EW value of all friendly units, highest EW, uh, enemy highest EW, one to subtract and divide by two. So, this one's got an EW of six. Let's see what their uh, highest total EW value of all friendly units. So, they got six, twelve, I gotta stop this here. They got twelve. Um, 13, 14, 15. They got 15. Yep, 3, 6. And they've all got ASW capability. So, 6, 12. They got 15. Okay. So, totally, and we roll 1d6. They got a 1. 16. And now this guy's 6. 16. Minus 6 is 10. Minus 4 is 6. Wow. Subtract and divide by 2. 6, minus six divided by 2 is 3. It's a positive number, but sorry, it's only 3. And you did not localize the boomer. Okay. Um, so... That's it. Yeah, this wasn't localized. So there's no combat. But for the sake of this example, let's say they got lucky. Um, what would they have to roll to get this? they got to get a 6. And right now they got 3, 6, 12, 15 divided by 2 is uh, 7. And they've got to get, they got to get 12. So they had to roll a 5 or six to localize it. They got a four. So they just missed it. If I'm doing it right. It's that having that gets you. So they didn't localize the boomer, but let's say they got lucky, they rolled a six. So they got six and six is twelve is eighteen is twenty one divided by two is ten. Ten is greater than six, so they localized it. But let's see if they can actually kill the boomer here. Uh, let me pull up the uh, battle map again. Uh, and there is a class 3 base here. Uh, it does have 3 ASW, which will introduce itself to the battle. Uh, this is our target. Let's just move this. Well. Um, and then we move all this. And basically, there's, there's no combat. These, these, they just close. And so we have to now resolve uh, combat here. So let's look at the four-mile chart. Let's see if we can do this right. Total applicable value of attackers plus a die roll. Subtract DW value of defenders. Okay. So we're doing an AU. That's the bottom left. And we've got a helicopter carrier. Okay. Actually, that's not true. Let me think about this here. The sub gets a shot. The sub does get a shot at the D range before we shift into AU combat. It's only got a 4. Okay, so what we'll have to do is 4 plus 1d6 and subtract total EW value of all applicable defenders. They may not do much. They roll a 4, so that's an 8. Uh, and an 8, and their EW value, though, is 6, 12. So that's, um, yeah, didn't, they did, he didn't succeed.
Right. He's not designed. A four is not very strong here. So he could have gotten ten, but still it wouldn't have been enough to totally eat um, No, wait, that's not right. This is a surface attack. I'm messing this up. Four and four is eight, and their EW is six. So the difference is maximum total defense value, which may be eliminated. Two. But the defensive values of the surface ships are greater than two. So the boomer does not succeed in sinking anything. Um, would have had to get something pretty high. That had to get to a nine at least. Uh, so if they got a 10, but you're still going to subtract a 6. So really the boomer had no choice. Uh, so we move now to anti-submarine warfare, and they total their... Ooh, that helicopter carrier is bad. 25 and 5 is 30. 36, 36 and 7 is 42. Subtract the EW value. Um, 42 minus 6 is... Uh, 36, um, and it would have been sunk. But we did see in reality, no. And this is it. If they if they've localized the sub, the sub will probably die with this kind of horsepower. You got aircraft, you got helicopters, the whole nine yards. If, so the big thing was localizing it, which they didn't do. So if we went with a localization die roll, uh, it didn't work out for them. Okay, let's take a look at that again. But if they do localize it, then they have a very good chance of sinking the sub. All right, so I think we put that one through its paces correctly, too. So at the end of this, I'm going to play it like they didn't localize it, so that still exists. Um, and then we do have this combat here. Oh, here we go. This is a long turn. I apologize. Let's do this one. Um... And here we have a class 2 base. So, there's no air power involved here. So we don't do that. But, oh, and there's a fast attack submarine. Okay, and this is a 2 base. So let me get the counter for that. It's a little more down. Oh, 12C. So, this guy's got an 8, so they're going to have to close. So this, these units are going to move down here. And I think the EW value also represents kind of like point defense, etc. So this guy can take a shot. <coughs> they can't shoot at him yet, <coughs> but he can take a shot here. Um, so he goes ahead and does an 8 plus a die roll. And then we subtract. So let's look at this again here. So this would be 8 plus 6, nice, 14. Uh, 14 from the defenders. The defenders have 2, 4, 7, 10, 12. So that's 2. Goodbye. That's about the only thing it can delete, but <laughs> that's something. So the frigate is taken out by the sub's launch. Uh, and these guys come in at 12C. This is going to get ugly. So now these guys come in here and the sub. And again, they can't attack. We're not doing base attacks, so nothing's going to happen here. they got to get to D. And there's still more round, one more round of combat. Um, so now we're at the C range. And there we go. Now we got 20 plus 1D6 got a 4. That's 24. 2, 4, 7, 9. Ouch. All I've got is 9. So 24 minus 9 is 15. And I'm uh, going to take out this guy. So that's uh, at least 6. Um... Oh, this guy could have... Well, there's nothing to attack. So we've got six left. And we've got a five, a four, and a five. So I can take out one of these, and they look to be the same. So we're going to take out this guy. Ouch. Okay, so these two are making it very hard to close. 
Uh, and then we finally, but there's, see, again, there's nothing to attack until we get to anti-submarine. But these can keep on attack. See, I mean, if these two ships move forward now, they're going to be hit by this one, too. So we're going to have 12, 24. And let's just say it's 24. 2 and 2 is 4. That's 20. These units are going to get wiped out. So let's say they pull back. Watch this. You can do this. But they can only pull back one. So again, they've moved out of the range of here. But again, our fast boat has a shot. Takes the shot. Out of four, that's 12. That's 10. That's eight. Takes out this. And now finally this guy escapes. Because nobody's got an A range here. And this sub only has a 3 ASW value. And he's not going to have any luck against this. So this base, I mean, there's a lesson to be learned here, too. Can you imagine if it was a class 1 base? Um, it would be very hard. Uh, this is actually, these bases are effective uh, ways to block, okay? Now, they were able to decoy and get somebody through, but just the fact of decoying, can you imagine going against a class 1 base here? So these bases do succeed in stopping up the Black Sea Fleet. They basically had to sacrifice these units to get the cruiser through, which then, of course, was involved in the successful sinking of the Nimitz, but not for loss also. So we did see illustrated here um, a bunch of good stuff here. Uh, they did take a lot of losses, but they got the carrier. Uh, these units took a lot of losses trying to get out of the Black Sea. And ultimately, we go by the original localization rule. And the important thing with subs is to stay hidden. If this boomer had been localized with this kind of ASW present, it would have been sunk. But it wasn't localized, you saw in the original die roll. So, um, so let's say that ends the turn. Uh, let's see what we've got here. Uh, this this guy he's going to pull off too. He's got, he's no match. Let's look at this. If he pulls into here, I mean look at that. Nine and three is twelve. Uh, twelve plus the number twelve minus five is seven two. He's dead. Uh, can he get any of these? Three and not six is nine. Nine. Look at that. Seven. Ten. They can. So he's going to do a Monty Python here, and run away. Okay. So, we see now at the end of the turn that basically all these units did was allow that CG to join the attack. And now these units next turn um, are going to have to return to base, logistics-wise. Yeah, neither of them. They're, they're going to have to come back. And a good chunk of the Black Sea fleet, especially a helicopter carrier, is gone. So let's just throw this in here. These are losses. So let's send them to destroyed units. Um, and I don't need this. And these units, uh, this guy returns to base, so he's not destroyed. I'm just going to delete him. Uh, so none of those were really lost. And these guys missed the mark, but they're in a base, so they're supplied. So at the end of the turn, and I'll hold this here to see what the western counterattack is going to be. Um, let's take a look at the losses. I think I have that button here. Destroyed. So, our Battle of the Med first turn. Let's see what we get here. Uh, the U.S. has lost. Um, that's the big loss right there. But uh, to pull that off, maybe they shouldn't have decoyed. They should have stayed in the Black Sea. Uh, look at all this Soviet losses. And then... This was stupid. I'm not going to... Unless you have a whole boatload of these bombers, it's not wise to use them. So, in hindsight, I should have known that. But, this gives you an idea of what they had to sacrifice to do this. So, from a losses point of view, um, I don't know if the Soviets actually came out ahead. And especially since they failed here, this whole battle here gave no victory points. Um, but there is a carrier gone, but there's still a carrier over here. Uh, and there's some fast boats. So 
We'll come back the next turn, and there's a bunch of supporting units here, these helicopter carriers, etc. So, the next video, we will do the um, Western Allied playthrough. Okay. So, hopefully this gives you a feel for the game, and this is what I always thought about this game. You'll have fierce battles in the first few turns, and then everybody starts running out of ships and aircraft. So... Uh, and hunting boomers, even here, was hard. And this wasn't a, this wasn't an Ohio class. This is probably one of the 40 for freedom with an old Polaris missile, with limited range. And yet they still couldn't localize it, even with a helicopter carrier. So, uh, kind of feels, kind of feels about right. This was stupid. Um, wow, well, they all got shot down. But uh, this kind of felt right. Uh, you know, I was wondering, they were piling on here, but that base also, and this 8B here, uh, pretty much shut them down, and but got the cruiser here, but they don't have much left. So your Soviet commander is sitting there saying, we got the carrier, but holy smoke, not with these losses going forward. And we didn't get any victory points. So I thought this would be a short video, but actually it's kind of long, but kind of gives you an idea of, of how this plays out. Um, and I'd be interested to look at this and maybe resolve these battles. Curious to see Sixth Fleet, the Fleet Series, how it handles this, or kind of build a scenario like uh, Command Modern Operations, especially this battle here, to see how that plays out. So, anyway, I'll stop the recording here. Um, thank you for listening. Comments are greatly appreciated likes and if you want to see the western allied response uh, subscribe and you will be notified when it's posted so thanks for listening and see you at the next video